So I wanna have a very detailed discussion with you all about protein. It is definitely becoming a very popular topic right now. And I think it is, it, it, it is definitely the hero macro, macronutrient. We need to bring protein back, um, just like we need to bring fiber back. There's a lot of really interesting chemistry reactions that happen when you eat fiber. And there's a lot of cool chemistry that happens in your body when you eat protein. And one of the things we're seeing as the obesity epidemic is getting worse and worse and worse is that people are are eating less protein and they're eating less fiber and we need to bring these back on this video i'm going to talk about why we need to bring protein back and there are four different reasons i want you to consider increasing your protein ready let's dive in so the first reason that i want you to think about improving your protein amounts is for fat loss and i know a lot of you come to my channel because you want to lose weight and awesome. And a lot of you have lost weight, like put it in the comments if you've lost weight uh, through either my books or through this channel, because it just, I love how some of you have, have dropped hundreds of pounds. It's really cool. So, um, but what protein specifically does is that it is the it is a stabilizer of blood sugar and it really kills your hunger. So let me explain what I mean by that. Let's go back. Let's put it in the terms of metabolic switching. So what we know is that we want to be able to switch over into these into the fat burner system periodically using fasting as a tool for healing. But if this system, the sugar burner system is like got you up and down and all around with all with the foods you're eating and it's not stable, getting over to that fat burning system is very difficult. So when we increase protein and do a high protein diet, we start to stabilize up your blood sugar. That makes your fasting lifestyle much easier. The example that I use um, all the time is beautiful human Todd, giving me authorization to speak about him. He lost 170 five pounds building a fasting lifestyle. And what I did when we first started working together is the first thing I did is have him take his standard American diet and compress it all into one eating window. And then once he got rhythm with that, I had him increase protein. And just by doing those two things within 90 days, he had lost 40 pounds. Now, why did that work? Well, I didn't take anything away from him. I just said, eat whatever you want, drink the soda you want, just do it in this eating window, and then let's bring in this really cool macronutrient by increasing protein. And what happened was his hunger started to change. And when his hunger became more stable, what he found is that he wasn't craving the junk he was craving before. So I will continue to say this, that you do not need motivation when it comes to weight loss. You need momentum. And when you pair protein with a fasting lifestyle, you will get momentum so fast. And that is what happened to Todd. A, a study, by the way, a really cool 2019 study showed that 30 grams of protein in a meal. So if those of you that like the numbers, 30 grams of protein in a meal caused people's body to burn more calories when they were in a rested state. So if you'd like to sit and burn more calories, make sure you're getting 30 grams of protein with every single meal. Second thing that protein does is it really helps us build muscle. Now, I hope you've heard this over and over again. There's great information out there about how we break muscle down as we age, and that really affects our functionality. And it can be as simple as we just have, you know, as you age, you have trouble like get, getting yourself out of a chair. Um, I, I, I've told this story before when my dad in his 80s had knee replacement surgery. Um, he had lost so much muscle going into that surgery that it became difficult for him to even get out of a chair to be able to reposition himself when he was recovering from the surgery. So you need muscle as you age. It is, it is probably more important than, than almost anything, especially when it comes to your musculoskeletal system. The other things about protein is that it'll break down into amino acids and these amino acids will go in and repair injured muscles. So when we look at things like my menopausal women that are losing uh, estrogen, and so therefore they're losing collagen, and so therefore they're ending up with more musculoskeletal injuries, when we bring protein in, we're not just building muscle, but we're increasing the amino acid profile that's helping us repair any injury. So if you had an injury that needed repair, the best thing to do is to improve your 
uh, protein intake. Okay, number three is it improves and helps with brain function. Now, this is really interesting because the research is showing that low protein diets create low neurotransmitter production. Now your neurotransmitters are these little mighty chemicals that get you thinking clearly, that keep you happy, um, that calm you. And for, again, my menopausal women, as we go after 40, as we lose estrogen and progesterone, we also lose dopamine, uh, serotonin, acetylcholine, glutamate, oxytocin, BDNF, GABA. So we're, we're losing 10 neurochemicals and that will affect our brain and that will contribute to things like dementia and Alzheimer's and mood disorders like depression and anxiety. So when is the last time you had a bad day? Did you ever ask yourself, did I eat enough protein? On a depressed day, on a mood low day, go eat more protein because it's gonna bring in those amino acids that are gonna help you make those neurotransmitters. Okay, check this out. I have a free fasting guide for you all. It's free and it's gonna teach you all the basics of fasting. It's gonna teach you how to kill hunger when you fast, which is really cool, and it's gonna show you how to break your fast, among many other things. All you gotta do is click on this link right here and enjoy. Okay, fourth reason you're gonna to want to bring protein back into your diet, and that's that it really improves your skin health. Okay, again, I, I, I'm a 54-year-old postmenopausal woman, so if I, I, if I got some of you listening, put it in the comments, because I look at the statistics on my YouTube channel, and there's a lot of you out there, and you're navigating the wild, wild west of the menopausal years, and I'm here to tell you that protein can really dramatically help not just the moods, not just the challenges you're having with weight gain, not just the breakdown of muscle, but it even help with your skin because as you lose estrogen, you lose collagen, and as you lose collagen, this stuff gets more wrinkled. So one of the largest bodies of research that have been done on protein shows that taking collagen protein into your system, and I'll talk about different ways we can do this in a moment, not only improves the smoothness of your skin, but it will increase the elasticity and decrease skin aging. I'm going to put the link to that study in the notes here so you have it. But when is the last time that you have looked in the mirror and gone, oh, wow, like, wow, I'm really really getting, uh, the wrinkles are really improve, are really accelerating. Did you translate that in to, am I getting enough protein? So in an era where we're leaning to toxic fillers like Botox and the junk that people are putting on their face, when did we stop and ask ourselves that maybe I just need to increase my protein? Here are some of my favorite sources of protein. And I've got vegan options and I've got animal options. So hopefully, hopefully my plant-based friends have not left this conversation. So my favorite is grass-fed beef. And let me tell you why. Grass-fed beef or lamb, and you could this would even be grass fed dairy has beautiful array of the right omegas. So it has omega-3, 6, and 9. Omega, our fatty acid profile is so important for cardiovascular health, brain health, joint health, skin health, all the things. So I like leaning into those proteins, knowing that I'm not just getting the amino acid surge that this kind of protein can provide me, but I'm also getting the right amount of fatty acid. Second one that I really love, if you can find it, is wild fish. Now, specifically salmon, because it has a high omega profile, but I also am experimenting with some of the fattier fishes like sardines and anchovies um, because of the vitamin D that exists within them. And remember, especially as we age, we need more vitamin D. So let's go back to a food that's gonna give us amino acids, gonna give us uh, fatty acids, and it's gonna give us vitamin D. Those of you that are spending tons of money on supplements, how about we come back to some of the great food strategies strategies here, like eating some of the wild fishes that can support our overall health in so many ways. Okay, other ones, free range chicken, turkey, and poultry. I love those foods because what they do is they also increase tryptophan, and tryptophan can get converted into serotonin, which will keep you happy. So it's a real big one for neurotransmitter production. And then for my friends that are plant-based, legumes, chickpeas, beans, lentils. Lentils are some of my favorite, um, and I'll tell you why. Lentils have an amino acid in it, uh, a profile that is rich in leucine. 
And leucine is that amino acid. When you get enough of it, it opens up all the sensors for all the other amino acids. So you want to be eating more of these leucine rich foods and lentils is an incredible one. Tofu. I am, I am determined to bring soy back into the conversation. I do not get how years ago we started to villainize soy as being this endocrine disruptor, and yet we've permeated our system with all these toxic ingredients um, like BHT and BHA, and we have slathering them on our body, but people are staying away from soy. Soy is a phytoestrogen, and it is really important for bringing up your estrogen levels and for my menopausal women, we need to do everything we can to bring estrogen levels back up. So let's bring soy back into the conversation, please. And make sure it's organic, that's key. But tofu, other forms of soy can be great. And then the last couple um, ways I like to get protein in, Greek yogurt. I often break my fast with Greek yogurt. Uh, put some berries in there, it's, that's phenomenal. And then nuts. But make sure your nuts are raw because the raw nuts are gonna have more enzymes in them that will help you break it down. And when you are eating protein, I feel like you should follow two rules based off the science that I've seen and, and, and making this easy so you can put it into your lifestyle. So one is 30 grams of protein per meal. I've, that The research says, yep, you wanna have at least, don't fall short. Um, I'm a big egg fan. Egg, egg has a lot of leucine in it too. Uh, but in order to get at least 30 grams, I have to have five eggs. And believe me, I've done it. Like I've done it where I've soft boiled five eggs and eaten them um, after a workout. So make sure you're looking at your amounts. So, and then the second thing is I do believe one gram of protein for every pound of body weight that you are is a really good way to approach protein. So, and you combine that with, and it's a really good way to clean up the sugar burner system, and you combine it with some of the different styles of fasting I've taught you, and now you have created a stellar lifestyle for yourself that keeps your brain working well, builds you muscle, helps you lose weight, and improves your skin. And I don't know a human on the planet that doesn't wanna do all of that. So this is why I love protein. It is absolutely the hero macro, but let's do it right, let's eat it clean, and if you are going plant-based, let's just make sure we're getting enough of it, and you might have to diversify your protein sources so that you're getting all essential and non-essential uh, amino acids in there. Massively important. As always, I hope that helps. Put in the comments what your favorite protein is. I'm kind of curious, because I got some food solutions for you coming up, so. I want to hear what you love the most. I don't want you to waste money on supplements. Your body's a miracle. Buy the right ones. Sometimes you don't buy them at all. Check out this video so you don't waste money on your supplement. When we do the same probiotic over and over and over again, what we're doing is we're creating a monoculture in our gut. 